Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I always say welcome to another episode of Victorious Friday. As I always mention, I have a special guest, and today is no exception. I have a dear friend, Dr. Paul White, that's joining us, and we're going to talk about a topic that's been on many people's hearts through this time of the pandemic and even before. We're going to talk about tips for dealing with stress from work. But we also know that today work is not only in the workplace, but it's also in the home. And so those stressors spill over to the to the home even more, the kitchen tables and the dining room tables and the living rooms today more than ever. Well, today, as we talk about this call for employees demands are higher and more stressful than ever. I mean, if you think about, you know, whether we do workplace in the office, whether we do a hybrid situation at home, you know, man, the stress can spill over. How do we even deal with innovation and, and collaboration and all those things where we used to come together in a community and have conversation? Those are all being challenged today. Uh, and the stressors are, are, are meaningful. And they're impactful to our health and our life. Well, today in the background, as I talk about this, this guest that I have, Dr. Paul White, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Paul. And, uh, you know, he's a Christian psychologist, but he also deals with uh, the secular world. He, he, he works with major, major employers around the world. Uh, he's an author. He's a speaker. He's a consultant, uh, which has worked with families and businesses and schools and ministries, et cetera, for the last two decades or more. And uh, when I think about Paul, I think about his speaking style and just a relaxed speaking style, just a man that uh, an expert, but but he's grounded in his principles and and he just makes it easy to talk to. Dr. Paul White, welcome to Victorious Friday. There's so many things I can say to you. And of oh, course, thanks, Terrence. you know, I would I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what you all know. I mean, he co-authored, you know, the five languages of appreciation. Uh, in the workplace with Dr. Gary Chapman. He also, uh, I mean, by the way, Paul, that is a number one New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. Not that you're going to mention that, but I can't, <laughs> right? And then the five love languages, uh, co-authored. I mean, those are just a couple of books. He's got a couple of new exciting projects coming out we'll talk about later. Paul, welcome to the show. So Thank good you, to have you. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Well, man, Talk to me about, you know, what you've been doing uh, last few years. I mean, we, we haven't connected. Talk, talk, to, give me right. an update. What's happening? I'm hearing grandkids and all this other thing. And yeah. Catch me yeah. up. So, yeah, I got 10 grandkids now out of, from my four kids. And business-wise, you know, for uh, quite a while, I was traveling around the country, consulting with family-owned businesses and dealing with the family issues that are intertwined. And it was actually through that that sort of led to the five languages of appreciation. I was working with an owner and North Carolina dad. And uh, I said, you know, how's this business succession plan going? He said, it's going pretty well. My son's stepping up. Uh, I think it's going to be okay. I walk across the hall and talk to his son. I say, you know, ask him the same question. He says, this is a disaster. It's never going to work. I can't ever please my dad. And so my wife and I, Kathy and I were reading five love languages. Dr. Chapman wrote that and um, thought, you know, maybe this could work. And so uh approached Dr. Chapman, actually pursued him for a year, finally got in front of him and pitched the idea. And we developed an online assessment that 300,000 people worldwide have taken and then the book and um, and then have just really been working to implement it and get the word out to government agencies. It's used in every branch of the military. Uh, it's used by major, you know, uh, multinational companies, by state governments by small companies, nonprofits, uh, schools, medical facilities. And so just trying to make it work. And then, you know, with COVID and the pandemic, that threw, you know, a bit of a wrench because everybody was working from home. And so we actually created some resources around that to how to apply this when you're working from home or remotely or hybrid. And we can talk about how that looks different. Um, so it's just, it's been good. I've been blessed. Uh, God continues to, uh, you know, use what I got and what he gave me. And, uh, and I'm just thankful for that. And, and it's, uh, it's needed, unfortunately, that we still have to learn how to uh, encourage, support one another, and then the whole stress thing. And so we actually did um, a book on toxic workplaces as well, and sort of learned about what makes uh, workplaces not very fun. Mm -hmm. 
Man, I tell you, you know, when I think about just our, our topic that we're going to talk about, the stresses in the workplace and how it's impacting families as well. You know, I think about a, a young mom and husband who has three kids under the age of two, <laughs> uh, new twin babies. Uh, and, you know, they're in a hybrid situation when they're working from home. Mm. Uh, they have the option to go to work. But, you know, I think about the stresses of the day even the stressors, uh, you know, to attend church on a regular basis, et cetera, right. and, and getting that relief and, and, and that pressure. What would you say to those young parents, those millennials, let's say, who, who have these young children, right? Uh, they're doing well. They're, they're starting to move up in their workplace. And, and these stressors are coming on um, from the home, from the workplace. Uh, what advice would you give them? Well, first, uh, I can identify our first two kids were twins and we were away from family. And I don't mean to be uh, sort of disrespectful. It's the closest thing to hell I ever experienced. And I would not wish it just from the sleep deprivation point <laughs> yeah. for at first two years. After that, it was, it was a fair amount of fun. But I think that the thing for anybody that's really experiencing a lot of stress, and most of us are, is uh, uh, to understand stress so that we can sort of problem solve about it, right? So, if you, in your mind, if you can sort of create a, an equation and stress equals demands being greater than resources, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel stress when you got more bills to pay than you got money, when you got more work to do than you have time or energy and so forth. Now that's sort of the simple version. The, the real version that really makes a difference for us to be able to attack it is that stress is actually perceived demands being greater than perceived resources because our perception of demands of what we have to do often aren't reality based or we we jack them up a little bit same thing with demands I'm, I'm sorry resources that sometimes we have resources but we don't let ourselves access it let me give you an example so if you got friends coming over to visit or family for a holiday you know there's different definitions of what a clean house is right i mean there is you know, you sort of put everything in, in the basement or in the guest room or sewing room, wherever people aren't going to go. And it's just like, it goes there. There's also, I mean, you walk in and it's like, if it's not a health hazard, you know, I mean, when you got teens and kids with food all over the place, yeah. that's one thing, or it can be immaculate. I lived in Atlanta for a while. It's mm -hmm. where we met. And, you know, in Atlanta, man, it's a different standard. It's pretty high. And so depending what you perceive the level of clean house is is going to raise or lower the demands that you feel yeah. you got to apply to that, yeah. right? Same thing with resources. You may not have the time or energy, but maybe you have some extra funds that you could hire somebody to come do, mm -hmm. you know, a quick once through for you. Mm -hmm. But given the way you were raised, it's like, no, man, you know, it's my job and a responsibility yeah. to clean the house. And yeah. I'm a failure as a, a wife or mother, father, whatever, yeah. that we're hiring. And so we, there's some resources that we have sometimes we don't allow ourselves to access mm -hmm. and that raises our stress as well yeah. so we got to understand that and once we understand that when you feel stressed yeah. and we can talk i mean most people know when they're feeling stressed <laughs> but we can talk about it if we need to but it's like okay what are the demands that i think are here mm -hmm. and what are the resources and then how I'm, what are my expectations that i'm applying to those demands that maybe i need to dial down a little bit given the situation, you know, if I got three little kids at home, man, if, if they can walk in and not hurt themselves, that's pretty good, you know? Uh, and then resources, it's like friends or family help out or you order a meal in versus cook it, you know, and you come from a background when if you have friends, you're supposed to make, make a meal for them. You know, we just have to have a way to, to address that. Otherwise we just, you can deal with the stress. You can sort of you know, try to manage whatever your anxiety or whatever, but it's really better to attack the source mm -hmm. so that we can dial it down, right? Yeah. Oh man, that's so good. You know, when I, oh, I love that formula you just talked about, right? Because we, that's exactly it. We, we think these demands on our life and they're all critical, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, right? And so we don't feel like we have the capability or we maybe not have identified our potential capabilities. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think about it because stress causes, uh, you know, man, it causes all types of issues uh, in our life. I mean, some of them are, are, are health related and, and others in other ways. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about it, you know, what are some of those, those effects of stress on our life? 
Well, you know, um, we did some research on toxic workplaces and then tried to create some resources, did create some resources to help out. And one thing I wrote a little pamphlet about how to know when it's time to quit a job. Not, mm. not that that should be your first option, but, mm. yeah. you know, and one of the things you got to pay attention to is if you're if you're not sleeping well, mm. that is not good because there are all kinds of downline results from that, you know. And so if you're either can't get to sleep because you're worried or you're just uptight or you wake up and you can't get back to sleep. We've got to deal with that because long-term lack of sleep can really mess you up and make you a not fun person to be around and not healthy as well. So you have that. And then also lots of times we start to have sort of these hidden physical things, whether that's, you know, a, you know, a crick in our neck or a sciatic nerve that's bugging us or stomach problems Pay attention to that because what's going on is your body is fighting and sort of your mind is setting up some stressors that are, it's coming out in your body. And a lot of people don't always connect that. Some We do more than we used to, but still just that kind of thing. And the other kind of result is, you know, sort of the impact on your relationships. I mean, how are you treating people? I know, man, when I lose sleep or I'm stressed. I am not a fun person to be around. I, I can hold it together a little bit, but then, you know, I'll snap at my wife or, you know, get really ang inappropriately angry about something that's stupid, little, you know, kind of thing. And so we've got to pay attention to those signs and say, what's up? And, you know, clearly we've got the resources of prayer and, and looking to God to intervene and to bring us peace. Um, and uh, to me, it's a both end, right? I mean, it's like yeah. God gave us tools to use. And then sometimes he just directly intervenes and, and, you know, like I may be stressed at work and then I got an appointment, a meeting that cancels. And I'm like, thank you, Lord, <laughs> you know, gave me a couple <laughs> extra hours to deal with stuff that, yeah. you know, otherwise yeah. would have been there. Now I tell you this, this topic is so important, Dr. White, because you know, if we talk about tips for dealing with the stress in the work and home, you know, I just looked at a, a recent study that came out and it talked about looking at the millennial generation, that 78% of that generation is feeling some form of stress, mental mm -hmm. anguish, et cetera. And 33% of Christians are even feeling that anger and, and even thinking about suicidal thoughts and things of that nature. So the stress is real, um, whether it's mental, perceived, physical, chem chemical, whatever, it's affecting our young generation more than I than I can imagine. And and I'm wondering, you know, was it always that way? It's just that the right. boomer generation just probably dealt with it differently or maybe even diagnosed it differently. And you know, because back then we were just, hey, don't say anything, right? Just right. keep it all to yourself, right. bottle it all up. So we're dealing with stresses in our society completely. And I'm wondering what's the best way to manage the stress or to deal with it, whether you're at work, at home, et cetera, what's, what's some best ways to do that? And how can employers kind of be better stress, uh, less stressors, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In terms of causes. What's well, some of your thoughts? Well, one thing, let me just address the issue of our culture. You know, our, our culture has moved toward taking God out of our lives. Mm -hmm. Right. And there are a lot of implications of that. But when you take God out of our lives, uh, I understand why people are depressed and anxious and, you know, feeling hopeless. Because if you're just a blob of chance matter that nobody knows, I mean, you don't have a purpose. I mean, you can try to create your own purpose, but it's like there's nobody that cares for you. So we have got as believers and followers of Christ, we have to understand that it is natural for people who don't understand that they are a created being that's loved, created in the image of God to get discouraged. And that's the answer. I mean, ultimately we can deal with everything else, but ultimately that's where it's at. So just <laughs> to lay that now, and what happens is Christians, I mean, we take on some beliefs and stressors about, you know, from our culture and so forth. Um, and, and I would say this, I mean, uh, you mentioned one little thing. I'm just going to go on a little side thing. For employers and even in the workplace, one of the ways that we create more stress unnecessarily is we create un um, or not reality-based time frames. So if you think about time as being a resource and then demands of getting things done, one of the things that we do 
that doesn't need to happen is to say, you know, I need this report. Let's say I need it by Wednesday. Okay. From somebody. But I say, I need a, I'm going to tell them I need it by Monday to give me a little bit of margin just in case they're late or whatever. And it, what that does is that reduces their time to get it done. And so it creates more stress or, you know, for some fast moving business people and entrepreneurs, you know, we want it right away, right away. And the reality is most of the time we don't need it right away. Yeah. You know, we need it. And, you know, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe in a couple of days. And if we can back off of that a little bit, that will really help the people around us. Cause you know what? I mean, at some point they start to, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I need it yesterday or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, do you really? And it, it's sort of an issue of integrity as well. I think for us as leaders or asking from others and say, and I'll tell people when I'm working on a major event or a document or something, and they say they need it by this way. I say, okay, now tell me your de- drop dead date. I said, I've never missed a drop dead date due to the grace of God, partly. Yeah. Uh, and so I will get it there by then. And then I understand you would prefer to have it, you know, two weeks before that or whatever. But let me know when I absolutely got to get it and I will manage to get it done. And yeah. so if we can use that in our workplace, uh, I think we could calm things down quite a bit. You know what? I think that technique uh, even works in the home because a lot of times we put stressors on ourselves saying we need to do this this weekend. Mm-hmm. In reality, we don't really need to do it that weekend. Right. Right. Uh, it could wait to next week. But yet mm-hmm. those stressors uh, that we place on our own self, uh, sometimes we're placing demands on our own self. Or maybe it's even the high achievers, Dr. Wise, I think about it. You know, I, I used to think, hey, if, if, the, if, the, if my supervisor says next week, I'm going to beat the deadline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. I'm going to get it done early because I'm a high achiever. Right. right. And that's going to show that I'm a high achiever. And right. so sometimes we can self inflict uh, those stressors on us. Yeah. Can't that be. takes us right because I fall on the same category. So I'm going to be talking <laughs> to both of us. Right. But I think part of that for us, and maybe a, a large part of it for us as far as Christ, is we don't understand our identity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who we are. We don't need to impress anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used that was what I was about. Right. I mean, so you do things. And yeah, there's things about excellence and doing things well. But you know what? Um, I don't see that so much in scripture as I see humility and serving. You know, and it's, and I think sometimes we can get those mixed up, but, but don't worry about what people think. If you do the right thing, if you communicate clearly, if you commit your ways to the Lord, you know, it's going to work out and you are loved. You are, I am, we're loved. God's going to take care of us. Maybe not in the way that we want, but he's there and he's going to take care of it. And we expend a lot of time and energy trying to impress people. And man, that it's just, it just goes down the tube because it doesn't really matter. Man, that's so right. Well, I'm so glad that you did mention um, without the biblical principle, we're challenged with identity, with with purpose. Uh, and that's a hole that will continue to remain in us until we deal with that. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, we, we have a, a comforter. We have a, a, a person within us uh, in the person of the Holy Spirit that deals with that. Uh, right. And, and we, we have to appropriate that power within us to, to deal with these issues. You know, Paul, what do, what do you see, uh, Dr. White? What do you see as the number one stress? And I hate to always say there's always number one stress. There's several <laughs> stressors. Right. You look at corporate America today. You look at the workplace. You look at the any, any way you want to look at it. What would you say is, is, is a key stressor in our, in our society today, in, in our corporate workspace today? Hmm. Well, as I, as I work with companies, as I look at my own life, and hang with me on this, I'll, and I'm going to get there, but I think it's really that we're trying to process too much information and meet the needs, expectations that that information sort of infers to us. That is a bunch of fluff and just static, and we need to remove that from our lives. Like for me, I've really super reduced how much news I tell. I'm about 15 minutes a day. Boom. That's I got the basics 
I don't need, because there's more in it. There's a lot of new research in neuroscience and all that. They're saying, we are not created to process all this and be in touch with all the needs of everybody in the world. And, you know, which is a challenge for us as Christians, because we want to respond. Yeah. But it's like, filter it out and then focus on what is the most important thing in your life. Yeah. You know, your relationship with God, your relationship with your family, which includes providing for them and work. Uh, but all this other stuff, it's like, let's get this right. And, and then things tend to, to work out better, I think. Um, so that, that's the number one stressor. Let me tell you the flip side of it. One of the biggest resources that we're not accessing and that we've sort of cut out our lives and research shows us, my, one of my sons is the associate dean for school of chaplains for the army and redeveloping training for, for the chaplains. And one his dissertation, uh, he has, he got a purple heart from uh, Afghanistan uh, due to a head injury, but resilience coming mm. back or getting through stress, one of the key aspects is social support. Mm. And if we cut ourselves off from relationships, from real relationships, I mean, it can include online stuff, but if it's only online stuff, that's, we know from yeah. neuroscience and stuff, you got to connect with the face, you know, and you got to see their eyes. And one of the cool things I say is, when somebody greets you and looks at you and smiles and is glad to see, you, that creates a sense of joy in us that hardly anything else does. And if we cut those out, we're really sort of just cutting ourselves off from, you know, the streams of life, I think. And so that has implications for working from home and um, road and hybrid. Uh, not that you have to be there all the time, but I think we've got to connect in person uh, sometimes. Man, you mentioned some key points there because I believe very much in prioritization and focus and execution. And the more I could get, you know, my staff and I, you know, to prioritize and focus and execute against a few things, right? There's always 50 million things to do. Sure, sure. But there's a few things we can do really well. In fact, there's many studies that suggest if you have more than three objectives, you never get them done. <laughs> right. The higher, the, the more objective you have, the less effectiveness you have. Uh, as, a, as an employee. And, and I think that's important for employers to note, as well as, as, well as parents. You know, one thing I, I, I've been thinking and stressing, I want to see if your confirmation is, is on this as well. I think one of the most important things that people uh, crave and desire is affirmation. And I think affirmation re reduces that stress. What would you say on that on that topic? <laughs> well, I didn't pay you to say that. <laughs> so just so the listeners know. But you know, so you know, I've written with Dr. Chad in this book on appreciation in the workplace. And, and one of the key points is we say people want to be appreciated, um, right or wrong. I mean, you can say, you know, I didn't get ever, you know, nobody patted me on the back growing up and I turned out okay. Um, I think it's part of our image of God. God wants to be worshipped, and not that we should be worshipped, but we like to be valued and affirmed for who we are. And I think that's part of the nature of who we are. And the problem is most people in the workplace don't feel valued and appreciated. And and uh, when I talk to business leaders, one misconception is that, okay, you know, we're not just going to have a chief happiness officer and we never would be, you know, happy and all that. That's not the goal. I mean, that's nice if that happens. But when people feel valued and appreciated, the workplace works better. We got all kinds of, I got 50 research citations in our book that when people feel valued on a team compared to a, a same kind of business that doesn't, they're more productive, they're more profitable, staff turnover goes down conflict goes down, managers like their jobs more, customer service ratings go up, it's on and on. It's, you know, on the job accidents go down, employee theft goes down. So it, it's sort of like oil in a machine, right? It's, it makes things run smooth and so that you can do the task of the job. And without it, you got tension, you got heat, you got friction, you know, sparks, all that kind of stuff. And so I think it's in the nature of who we are. And you know, Dr. Chapman uh, was given the wisdom of God to, you know, identify the five love languages in personal relationships. And if you have your listeners haven't read that, it's just it's just an outstanding book that sold 20 million copies. Um, but, you know, that we don't all feel appreciated in the same way. And an another thing that leaders believe is it's sort of like it's words like, you know, you tell them thanks. All. That's fine. We've had 300,000 people take our online assessment and 
um, 46 percent have words as their primary language. So it's the biggest one. But that's less than half of your workforce. So if you only use words, then you're missing by the get go, uh, you know, over half. And so we really we've worked at developing online assessment that identifies people's languages and the actions because different people like different kinds of quality time or acts of service. And it, it just seems that, I mean, I, I attribute when we as Christians bring true principles to life, like in science, you know, like Newton did and all the great scientists, you know, it, it, it works. <laughs> and so the fact that we've tapped into the true nature of man, and sure there's distortions about it, but then it works and, and things go well. Yeah, man, that is so well. You know, now my understanding is you have a new book coming out in January. Tell us a little bit about the title. Tell us a little bit about the book, what motivated you, and uh, how can my listeners get a copy? Yeah, so uh, it's called Making Things Right at Work, and it's dealing with conflict, how to deal with conflict health uh, in a healthy way at workplace. So it was actually um, Dr. Jennifer Thomas wrote The Five Languages of Apology with Dr. Chapman. And it was mainly for personal relationships and with other believers. And she said, I'd like to try to apply this to the workplace. And so we did. And it sort of does. But, you know, apologizing in the workplace, in the secular workplace, isn't always a deal, right? And so we felt like we needed to wrap it a little more. And so what we did is we identified where does conflict in the workplace come from, the different sources? And then how do you keep that from blowing up and getting out of control bigger than it needs to be? Once it does... How do you deal with it? How do you, how do you sort of apologize or deal with messing up? How do you let hurt go once you've been offended and, you know, sort of sinned against, if you will? And then the last part is how do you build or rebuild trust once you've gone through sort of a tough time? And, um, and so I'm excited. You know, my stuff is, that I work on, it's not really intellectually challenging. It's not like, oh, this is deep, but it's, it's practical and it gives real practical tools to help you get through it. Because you think about stress at work or stress at home, think about the times that husband, wife, son, daughter, whatever, come home from work and they are stressed about something that's happened at work or a stressed out relationship. And again, we just want to give practical tools to help them get past that so that, you know, their, their life at home can be uh, more peaceful. Dr. White, give us the name of the book again and how can they get a copy? Yeah, it's called Making Things Right at Work. And it's uh, on sale already on Amazon. You can also go to our website, uh, which is appreciationatwork.com. It's the word at, so appreciationatwork.com. It's got the five languages of appreciation, that one, a book on toxic workplaces and, and uh, the other resources we have. Fantastic. Well, I always encourage my readers not just get one copy to get 10 copies because you're going to keep one copy. Uh, and then you're going to hand out other copies to your family right. and friends. And so, um, you know, just please pick up about 10 copies, put it on your desk, uh, put it in your office, wherever. Uh, as friends come by, uh, give them a gift, right? This is a love gift. It's, you're talking one of the best-selling authors and co-authors, uh, 20 million books, et cetera. I mean, just on and on and on. So you want to have this copy readily available uh, for your friends, family and friends and so forth. So get 10 copies, not one copy. Um, and that's from Terrence Chapman, not, not from Dr. White. <laughs> but uh, Dr. White, here's why I like to, to leave us, because I think about, you know, as I think about this show and I think about our topics, uh, and mo many people will say, Terrence, you, you guys are about ministry and family, et cetera. What's this whole business thing about? Why are you having business people on? And here's why I wanted to have business topics on. You know, as a workplace leader for, for over two, three decades, uh, and led at very high levels, uh, understanding stress in the workplace was critical. But also I understood that stress in the workplace also impacts my family life. It impacts Absolutely. your family life. And so if you're stressing at work or causes of stresses at work, you're going to bring that home probably most of the time, which impacts your marriage, your kids, et cetera. Uh, and, and so we have to, these principles that Dr. White is talking about, they really transcend beyond the workplace into the home. And I love this idea when we take on more demand than our capabilities or perceived capability, stress happens in our life, which causes all types of health issues and other issues. 
And we lose our confidence a lot of time. We lose uh, our ability to even think because we feel inadequate. And we know that from studies, 65% of the workplace today feel totally inadequate to deal with these workplace stresses, our life. So how do we deal with them? Well, today we've talked about some of those ways, but Dr. White, I like to always leave my guests with the last uh, comment and statement. You can go anywhere you want to go. All right. You can stay on topic. Just, just think about encouraging our listeners today uh, as we talk about this topic or how, you know, just tips for dealing with stress. Take us anywhere you want to go, uh, share what you want to share, and just be a blessing uh, to our many listeners today. Well, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, Terrence. I, I have two thoughts. One is whether you're in the workplace and business or not, I think uh, in North American Christendom, we've got to rediscover that our God is humble and he's a servant and that's what we're supposed to be like. And uh, I heard a guy speak. He said, how many, he was talking to ministers and pastors. He said, how many of you have excellence as part of your, you know, missions and values? And a lot of hands went up. He said, how many of you have humility as one of your core values? Nobody raised their hand. And I think we lose that. And I think we're here to serve. We're here to meet needs and God will bless us in the midst of that. So, I, you know, that's important. And it flows. I mean, it's one of our core values of behavioral values is we serve our customers until they feel like we've dealt the right thing, even if it costs us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's there. But the other part, just for, I mean, one of my life verses is Proverbs 13, 20, that he who walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And I would just encourage people, you know, get good people around you. If it's, you can only meet with them once every three months, you know, pursue them, say, I, I, you know, I want to learn from you. And it's not just a successful business guy, you know, it's people who are living their lives. Well, you see it in their families, yeah. you see the fruit of healthy relationships and get time with them and say, what are you reading? What are you listening to? And learn from that. And man, that will just, you know, bless your life. You'll be like the tree planted by water, you know, that just gives fruit in every season. And, uh, that's where it's at, man. You know, you just serve God and, and learn from those around you that are wise. And I tell you that that will preach, my friend. I love that ending. Thank you, Dr. Paul White, for taking the time uh, to share wisdom on our show. You bet. I'm, I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Awesome.